My name is Eileen Cullen. I'm the UW Extension Field Crop and Forage Crop Extension Entomologist. And today we're in a cornfield in southern Wisconsin. The stage of this corn is V3. And we're here today at this early season corn stage to talk about black cutworm. Uh, some of the main points that we'll cover today are trapping for black cutworm, how we predict when the black cutworm larvae will be in the cutting stage for these uh, young corn plants up to about the V4, V5 growth stage. And we'll talk about scouting and management recommendations. And one of the take home messages and really what you'll see as we go through this short video is that we're really talking about the size of the black cutworm larvae and the size of the plant. And where is that vulnerable stage of the corn plant growth from emergence through about V4, V5 when it can still be cut by that larvae and how you can manage that and prevent that. The black cutworm larvae have seven larval instars, and it's the fourth larval instar that we're concerned about because um, that is the stage that can actually cut corn plants and lead to economic uh, stand loss and yield loss. So to determine when you may have um, potential of fourth instar black cutworm larvae in a cornfield, we use degree days, insect degree days for black cutworm. It takes 300 in, uh, black cutworm degree days using a base temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And we accumulate those from pheromone trap captures for black cutworm. And we look for what's called an intense black cutworm moth trap capture. That happens earlier in the spring. Black cutworm moths fly, they migrate to Wisconsin in the upper Midwest from the Gulf Coast states. They do not overwinter in Wisconsin, they migrate here. And the pheromone trap captures help us to determine when we have an intense catch in those traps. And that's defined as eight to nine black cutworm moths in a trap over a one to two night period. When that happens, then um, departments of agriculture, crop newsletters from entomology, UW Extension, um, will alert um, growers that 300 degree days can be then accumulated from that intense trap capture. 300 degree days out will then predict when fourth instar larva should be present in the field. So that's an important uh, life stage to remember. Um, with that, when the uh, black cutworm moths migrate from the Gulf Coast states, um, they are attracted to fields, uh, corn fields that have low growing crop residue, uh, winter annual weeds present in or around the fields. And those are the types of plants that the black cutworm moths will like to lay their eggs. And that damage can be patchy and distributed throughout the field. Again, it's um, going to be associated with those types of low growing winter annual plants, some grasses, um, but those can be the plants and the types of fields that you'd want to scout first, cornfields planted there. So here we are in a field and we have some early black cutworm feeding damage. This plant was fed on in about the V2 to V3 stage. And what you'll notice is one of the things that we can tell right away here is that this feeding damage was done by a small black cutworm larva. Um, the reason that we know that is because we're not seeing the plant cut. It's obviously still intact, but we have these pinhole feeding. You see the three straight lines going across here and several feeding holes in the leaf here. And what that tells us uh, as a rule of thumb is that um, the larvae were still small, generally less than half an inch, younger than fourth instar larva, not yet able to cut the plant, but able to cause these feeding holes. This damage is not economic to crop yield. Um, you'll see in a moment as the larvae get to fourth instar and larger, and they can begin to cut the plants, that's the economic concern that we'll have. We've moved from the small larval feeding, which you just saw in the small pinholes in the approximately V3 corn leaf. The feeding was probably actually done in the V2 stage. And here what we're seeing is a cut plant. Again, this would have been done um, by a larva that is fourth instar or larger. You can see the cutting pattern, a very ragged kind of chewing here. That's really where the, the mouth parts of the black cutworm severed that plant from its, from its base here. We still have a little bit of the flag leaf growing. So we can move from looking at the cut plants to the actual larva that caused the damage. And again, I know I stress this throughout the video, but it is important to know that fourth instar larva or larger, so again the fourth, fifth, sixth instars, and up to the seventh instar can cut plants. 
What we have here in the soil are a fifth thin star and a sixth thin star. They're a dark gray, almost kind of a greasy looking larva. But when disturbed or handled, picked up out of the field here, they'll curl up into this, this tight C shape. To scout for black cutworm larvae in an emerging cornfield, you want to visit five different areas in the cornfield for a total of 100 plants. And what you're doing at each of those five areas is looking at 20 plants within a line of corn plants. And just inspect those plants and the things that you'll be looking for are the feeding holes, those, those small pinhole feeding holes which you saw. That would indicate that small larvae are present in the field. And as the larvae grow, that feeding will progress to cut plants, as you saw. So the scouting procedure is to look at those 100 plants, again, 20 plants at five different locations. And it's best to try to sample those five sets of 20 plants from throughout the cornfield, get a good representative sample. Once you do that, you take the percentage of cut plants, actual cutting, and it's a very low percentage that would indicate a need for treatment. The traditional threshold for black cutworm in, in corn from emergence through the V4, V5, really the V5 stage, um, was 5% cut plants. And we've revised that, entomologists in the region, we've revised that a little bit downward with high corn prices this last couple of seasons. And we're looking at a threshold of approximately 3% cutting. So anywhere in that range, 3%, certainly no more than 5%, would indicate need for a rescue treatment. Once you've scouted a cornfield for black cutworm larval feeding damage and determined that a treatment is warranted, insecticide um, label information and suggestions and information on black cutworm biology, again thresholds, and integrated pest management can be found in UW Extension Publication A3646 titled uh, Pest Management in Wisconsin Field Crops. And when making a treatment decision, it's also again important to gauge the size of the cutworm larva that you found in the field with those cut plants. It's always best to find the cut plants and confirm the larvae presence uh, when you make that treatment decision. If you do that and you're at threshold and you're looking at insecticide recommendations um, for treatment, you can also use Table 2.9 in the publication A3646. It has a table where you can take the head capsule, the black cutworm, and line that up, the very tip of the head of the black cutworm larva, against a table. And that's important because it can help you gauge whether the larva is in the fourth instar, the fifth instar, fifth, sixth, or seventh instar. And the reason that that's important is because as the larva gets towards seventh instar, it only has about four or five days remaining to feed. So it really wouldn't be economical to treat at that point. When you're looking at fourth instar, the larva can actually feed and cut plants for an additional 25 days. Fifth instar larva, about another 21 days. And sixth instar larva, about 14 days or two weeks. So those are optimal times. Um, it's really all about um, gauging the size of the corn plant, the corn phenology. Are you less than V5? Um, and are those larvae large enough um, on those small plants to cut the plant and do they have feed, a good amount of feeding left. So um, those are some things to take into account beyond just the insecticide that you might use to make a treatment recommendation.